Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today we design the very first counter, all right? The most simplest of all. We've seen the basic introduction to counters in the previous video. And today we start designing them. If you haven't watched the previous video, the link is in the description below. You go there and you watch. And you also subscribe to my channel. Okay, so I'll come back. Now, uh, the first counter that we design is a 2-bit asynchronous asynchronous up counter all right now if you watch the previous video so you're familiar with the terms bit you know asynchronous the previous video up counter going from a low state to a higher state fine okay so now for 2-bit, for 2-bit, you know, that we can represent the maximum number in what? 1, 1 is the maximum number that we can represent with 2 bits. And this is the decimal equivalent of 3. All right, so this is maximum. And we'll be having a start from 0, which means that this counter will be counting from 0 to 3. Fine? Now to design this counter, 2 bits, so which means for each bit we require one flip-flop, so we require two flip-flops in this particular case so so let me have it okay this is now the first flip-flop let's say I'm using J K flip-flop all right J K Q Q complement now the clocks so this is the clock this is the clock. And now you know that in asynchronous you have to do what? A clock, uh, external clock is given to the first flip-flop and to the second, the output of the first is given. Okay, let's say this is flip-flop number A, this is flip-flop B. So the output is QA and the output is QB. All right? So we will be taking the outputs from here, QA, and this would be QB. This is our output of the counters, all right, in which QB will be the most significant bit, all right. QB is what? Uh, where should I write? I write it over here. QB is the most significant bit, and QA is the least significant bit. All right. Now you do what? You give all the, the, the inputs a logic one. All right. Let's say this J. Okay. K. And this J and K. They are all given the same input. That is logic one. Now you know when they are given the logic one. So it will do what? It will perform the toggling operation at the output all right now this is drawn okay now we do what we draw the the the, the clock pulse all right so so let's say we have it like this okay and so on it will repeat all right so, this is what? This is the external clock pulse, all right? Okay, now we, we, are, we are interested in what? These are negative edge triggered flip-flops, so we are interested in the negative edges. So, this is the negative edge, this is the negative edge, this is the negative edge, and this is the negative edge. So, let me, let me draw the line so, so that we do what? We make our diagram easily all right now let's say this is the falling edge number zero this is the falling edge number one number two number three and let me draw one other okay you'll come to know why okay so now we have these four falling edges now what do you have? 
this clock now, now the, this clock is given to what? To, to flip-flop number A. So the output of this flip-flop now depends on this clock. So which means now we draw the QA over here. So as far as the clock is low, so the output let's say initially was low, so it will stay in, in its own state. Now on the negative edge, it will toggle, so now it will go high. Until the next falling edge, it will stay high. On the next falling edge, it will do what? It will toggle, and toggle means it will come from high to low state. Okay, so this is the high to low state. Now again, as far as the clock has an, uh, uh, reached another uh, falling edge, it will stay low. Again in the negative edge, it will toggle and it will go high till the next falling edge. And the same process repeats on the negative edges. Now this is the graph for A, alright? So I, I a little came down over here. So let me come here, okay? Now, now what do you have? Now this is the clock, this is the clock for the next flip-flop, that is the flip-flop number B. So which means the flip-flop B will again operate on the negative edges of this particular clock pulse now. Fine? So, 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 uh, because this is also negative edge trigger. So I draw the, the, the QB over here. So let's say initially it was low as well, so, so this is the initial state. Till the first falling edge arrives, it is zero. At the falling edge it will toggle and it will go to a high state. Then till the next falling edge it will stay high and at the falling edge again it will toggle, which means it will come from one to zero. This is the zero state and it will stay low till the next falling edge has arrived. So this is now the falling edge for this flip-flop. Now if we have another flip-flop, so now that will operate on this particular edge which we'll be seeing in the next video, right? So this is it. Now this is the diagram for it. Now let's see if, if I draw the truth table for it, all right? Uh, truth table. So we have the inputs as uh, we have a clock. Okay, clock. We have uh, Q uh, B and we have Q A. All right. Now, if the clock was zero initially, let's say at this state the clock was zero. So we have Q what? Q A is uh, Q A is zero and Q B both are zero till the first negative edge. Okay. So we have both zeros. Now. When the clock, when the first clock pulse arrive, which means the first, uh, the first negative edge arrived, this one was the first negative edge. So QA got high and QB is still low. So QB is still low and QA got high. We are at this stage now, okay? Now we reach this stage, which means the, the second clock pulse has arrived. The second negative edge has arrived, all right? Okay, now what do we do? The, the QB goes low and, and what happens to Q, no, sorry, QA goes low and QB goes high. So which means we have QB as 1 and QA as 0. The third, now that we are at this stage now. So the third clock pulse, the third negative edge has arrived. Or if you, uh, okay. And, <coughs> sorry. So what happens is that Q, QA is still high and QB also goes high. Or did I make a mistake in the previous? No. QA goes high and QB is still high, all right? So QB is still high and QA goes high. Now we are at this position, which means the fourth clock pulse has arrived. And now at this position, you see what? That both QA and QB have gone low. So the state where you get a zero, zero, this is where you need to stop. So we've started zero, zero, and it is going back to zero. Now if another clock pulse arrives, it goes back to zero, one, then one, zero, then one, one, and this will repeat. So which means we will omit this state. All right, now we don't study this state, and that is why I told you that I'm drawing this, so that both have gone low, 
and we are not interested in this. So, so for the three, for the two bit counter, the maximum count is three one one. So that our interest, our area of interest, was still here. All right. This is it. Okay. Now I told you something about the frequency divider. Right in the previous video, frequency division. Frequency division. So let's say now now the, the time period first. So the time period of the clock is this one. This is let's say TC. Fine. The clock now, now the out now the frequency for the, the time period for this uh, this clock is let's say this one which is represented by T. A and the and the time period for this B is this one, which is represented by T B. So now have a look. T A is two times of T C, right? T A is two times T C, right? Yes. So if you take the frequency, you know that the frequency is one over time period. So this implies that uh, you have what? The 1 over the frequency of A is equal to 2 over the frequency of C, right? This equation with the help of this. So which means that the frequency of C is uh, 2 times the frequency of A. All right? Frequency of C is 2 times the frequency of A. Or, <coughs> sorry, or I can write that the frequency of A is the frequency of C divided by 2. So, which means at the first flip-flop, you have the frequency divided by 2. Now, for the next, for the next you have what? For the next you have this, uh, time period of B, TB is 2 times the time period of A. You can see from the figure. Now you have what? This implies what? That 1 over the frequency of B would be equal to 2 times over frequency of A. Alright? Now, now you have what? Uh, yeah, this would imply that the frequency of A is equal to what? Is equal to 2 times the frequency of B. Right? Okay. Now what you do, you put, uh, or you can say, from this equation, we can say that, that the frequency of B is equal to frequency of A divided by 2. And frequency of A is what? It's frequency of C divided by 2. So I can write that the frequency of B is equal to frequency of the external clock pulse divided by 4. So let me generalize it for you. Let me, so, so, so what should I remove? So let's say I remove this figure, all right? Okay. So now let me write it down. If we have a P number of flip-flops, all right? If we have... Uh, if we have... P number of flip flops in which J and K both are one and they are also negative edge triggered. The clock frequency is divided by two to the power P at the final output, all right, at the final output. As in this case, as in this case, we had two flip-flops, so which means the final frequency would be equal to the, the external clock frequency divided by 2 to the power 2 is 4, and which we obtained over here, that the final frequency was FB, and the external frequency was FC, so that was divided by 4. So that's all about it, okay? And that's all about this lecture also, okay? So see you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah, probably with the three-bit counter. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.